Good morning, church, and welcome to today's Hope Daily. I hope you're doing well this morning. Um, whatever's happening for you today, um, I just pray that the Lord's going to be with you, that he's going to bless you, he's going to speak to you, and so and, and do that during this time now as we come to the scriptures. So just get yourself now into a moment, in a, into a position to receive um, from the Lord and turn off distractions around you if you can and just focus on him in this moment you know every time we come to to god's word he he speaks to us and he's going to speak to us this morning as we listen so i'm going to pray and then i'm going to read this passage to us and uh yeah i'll explain in a minute Let, let's just pray first father father thank you so much that today you have given us this day to live for you Thank you so much, Lord, that your mercies are new this morning as they are every single morning. That today we can stand in front of you as forgiven, cherished, whole people because of your grace. And Father, I just pray for us now, Father, as we come to your words, that you would speak life to us now in this moment. For those of us who may be just struggling today, that Lord, these would be the words that we need to hear to encourage us, to challenge us, to help us move forward with you. So turn off all distractions in our minds and make us focused on your presence this morning, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let me read this um, to you. I'm going to read the whole chapter, the whole of chapter 22. It's such a moving and a beautiful chapter. And I think really what we see in this chapter is, do you know what? It can look like everything is falling apart, but... That's not, you know, what, what it looks like on the surface is not always what's happening in reality. And here we see a chapter where it looks like everything is falling apart. And yet in the midst of it all, we see God working in the most powerful way ever in the whole of history. So a great chapter, Luke chapter 22. This is what it says. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for he feared, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and the officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him in the absence of a crowd. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. They said to him, where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, behold, when you have entered us at the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and tell the master of the house. The teacher says to you, where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples, and he will show it to you, a large upper room furnished, prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he'd given thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now I will not eat the drink of, I will not, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had been eaten saying, this cup this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question with one another, who of them is going to do this? A dispute arose among them as to which of them should be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you 
become as the youngest and the leader as the one who serves. For who is the greater, the one who reclines at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials and I assign to you as my father assigned to me a kingdom that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. I've prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to them, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. And he said to them, when I sent you out with no money or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said nothing. He said to them, but now let the one who has a money bag take it and likewise a knapsack and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture will be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors, for what is written about me has its fulfilment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to that place, he said to them, Pray you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there he appeared to him, an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, what would would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those that were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear, Jesus said no more of this and touched the ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the officers of the temple and the elders who'd come out against him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, did you not lay hands on me? But this is your hour. This is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house, and Peter was following at a distance. When they'd kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light, and looking close at him, said, This man was also with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. Then a little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man was also with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, whilst he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord and how he said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept, wept bitterly. Now the man who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. So they also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And many other things against him, blaspheming him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders and the people gathered together, both the chief priests and the scribes, and they led him away to their council. And they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, I tell you, you will not believe. If I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And so they said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony 
sorry, he said to them, he said, you say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do they need? We have heard it from his own lips. Father, we pray again, having listened to those words, I've been reminded of what it was that Jesus did for us. We thank you so much, Lord, that we sit here today having this security before you to know that what Jesus did then in the midst of those trials has brought us freedom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Guys, we've basically run out of time this morning, but I'm just really moved by reading this passage once again. Just not a chance to say much more this morning, but you know, in the midst of this circumstance, sin is there. Peter's sin, Judas's sin, the sin of the people who arrested him, those that beat him, those that falsely tried him. And not only is their sin here in the story, but your sin is also here in the story. Jesus, as he does this, as he looks across at Peter and sees that denial, he too, in some ways, has your life in mind and the times in which you have denied him in word and deed and let him down. And yet the story of Easter is this, that this, this man 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, goes through this horrific story of pain, of seeing his friends betray him, of being beaten, of having that awful moment of separation from his father and he does it for you today so that you might find freedom i want you today as you go through today just continue meditating on this story and understanding feeling the emotions of what happens imagine what it would have been like to be peter imagine what it would have been like to be jesus imagine what it would have been like to be the other disciples put yourself in this story and feel the powerful of it you know god loves you he paid a price for you he wants you to be free. Amen. Amen. Go and have an awesome day, guys. Don't forget, the price has been paid. Jesus has set you free.